That's right, USB 4 is coming, promising to bring even crazier fast speeds to a computer near you very soon. And it was just announced by the USB IF, the USB Implementers Forum, which is a nonprofit organization that kind of handles creating the specifications and definitions for what is required in different versions of USB. And believe it or not, there are a few things that actually do make this announcement a bit interesting that you might not have been expecting, so we're gonna talk about it. Now, some of you might be thinking, Again, wait a minute, that was pretty quick. Didn't we just get USB 3? But actually, the upgrade from USB 3.0 to 4.0 has actually been longer than average. If you look at the history, USB 1.0 was released way back in 1996, then four years later, it was USB 2.0, and then eight years later, it was USB 3, and now, 11 years later, we're getting USB 4. So it's been the longest in USB history. Of course, that probably is because there were some incremental updates in the form of USB 3.1 in 2013 and USB 3.2 in 2017. So it kind of makes sense. It's not like we've been stuck with the same one the whole time. But anyway, on to the good stuff. What is the deal with USB 4? How is it better? Well, the first main one is obviously the speed. It's gonna have a maximum of 40 gigabits per second, which is twice the current latest USB version, which only supports a measly 20 gigabits per second. Another interesting one is like the most recent 3.2 specification, USB 4 is gonna support two separate lanes of data, which will be divided into 20 gigabits per second each. Now you can combine that into total 40, but the advantage of having two separate lanes just means that you can have two types of data sent simultaneously, two separate signals. So if you wanted to combine them and both send data over both of them, you'd get that 40, or maybe you wanna have data sent over one, and you're also using it to show a display like video, you could have both types of data simultaneously, one display, one just regular data. And that's mostly thanks to being able to use the two separate physical sets of pins and wires on the USB type C connector. And of course, as you would expect, it's all gonna be backwards compatible with previous versions of USB 3, USB 2, and Thunderbolt 3. Whoa, wait a minute, Thunderbolt 3, where the heck did that come from? Isn't that a totally separate protocol? Well, not really anymore, which brings us to the next major news with this whole USB 4 saga. You may currently know Thunderbolt as the proprietary, privately owned protocol that was created by Intel and Apple, and it supports things like very fast speeds, up to 40 gigabits per second with Thunderbolt 3, and it also supported a lot of other stuff, such as alternative modes, they're called, which just means being able to be used not just for data, but also display and like MHL protocol, stuff we're not gonna get into. But the problem is that because Thunderbolt is proprietary, it is not free to use, it's not royalty free. So every time a manufacturer wanted to put in a Thunderbolt connector on their computer and possibly even create wires for Thunderbolt, they would have to pay Intel or I believe Apple as well a fee to be able to even do that, which is not the case for USB because USB is an open standard. But the big news is that Intel actually released the specification for Thunderbolt 3 to the USB IF organization to use it in USB 4 royalty free. So they will be able to use the same technology, not have to pay for it. So using all this new technology, or at least the permission to use it, Thunderbolt 3 is gonna be the basis for USB 4. And that doesn't really come as a surprise when you look at the same speed. So Thunderbolt 3 supported 40 gigabits per second. Makes sense that now USB 4 is gonna have 40 gigabits per second. It's kind of using the same stuff. And obviously this is great news for everyone. It means that we're gonna get a lot of the same features that were originally exclusive to Thunderbolt 3 in USB 4. And yeah, you could have just used Thunderbolt 3, but a lot of computers and devices might not have used it, again, because of that royalty fee. Companies might not have used it in the first place at all if they wanted to keep costs down. And like I said before, Thunderbolt 3 was kind of superior in a lot of ways, supporting those multiple protocols and being able to do things like daisy chaining displays together and being able to power multiple displays at once. Now, apparently Thunderbolt still will coexist separately from USB 4, so it seems like it's not like Intel's just getting rid of Thunderbolt, they're just basically allowing USB to use it royalty free, but I think the case is that Thunderbolt still might have additional services that Intel can offer manufacturers, so there still might be a reason to use Thunderbolt 
as Thunderbolt, not just USB 4, but I don't really know what that will be. I'm not sure if we're gonna see Thunderbolt as often at all, but for most of us, that's probably not gonna matter and we're gonna get everything we're probably gonna need in USB 4. So I'm really hoping that this actually means that USB will kinda take its name and become actually universal more so than it has been, and we're not gonna have to buy separate Thunderbolt cables and USB cables, because Thunderbolt 3 was using the USB Type-C connector, so you might have bought a USB connector that wouldn't have support Thunderbolt, even though Thunderbolt cables are all USB-C. It's a big mess. So hopefully that should clear things up. If you're wondering when we're gonna to start to see USB 4 connectors and devices, probably not this year. Just the specification is gonna be released this year and maybe by the beginning of next year, like at CES 2020, is when we'll start to see actual physical devices and connectors that will be able to use it. Because right now, the USB IS really just released an announcement, kind of giving over the big overview, some teaser features, and the final specification probably takes longer, which is why they're not releasing it yet. I think the 3.2 specification was like 500 plus pages. So yeah, that's probably why it's not out yet. And here's a fun fact. You may have noticed I kind of was writing USB 4 as one thing, and that was not a typo. Unlike previous versions of USB where it was named like USB Space 3.0 or USB Space 2.0, the USB IF in their infinite wisdom decided to completely change things up with USB 4 for whatever reason. And that shouldn't really come to a surprise because USB IF has had a history of notoriously having the worst, stupidest naming systems you can possibly conceive of. And all you have to do is look at how they handled USB 3 to understand that. So remember USB 3.0, well, that was actually renamed to USB 3.1 Gen 1, and then is now called USB 3.2 Gen 1. Yes, they renamed it twice, but there already was a USB 3.1. So the first time they renamed it, they had to call it USB 3.1 Gen 2, and now they renamed that one a second time again to USB 3.2 Gen 2, and then they created a new one. And instead of calling it USB 3.2 Gen 3 or something like that, that would make sense, they decided to call it USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2. Yeah, I'm not even gonna get started on that. Apparently, a lot of this has to do with the fact that new specifications of USB rolls the previous versions into it, so they don't wanna make it seem like they're totally different specs, which it's so stupid, we're not even gonna get into that. If you are curious though how USB-C works and all that sort of stuff, I did make a totally separate video talking about that. I'll put the pop-up wherever it comes out. And because a lot of times it is really confusing, USB 3 is separate than USB-C. USB-C is just the connector, and I explain all of that in excruciating detail in a way that I think makes sense, so definitely check that one out. In any case though, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely check out some other videos I have on here. You can just click on those, and until next time, be seeing you.